Hey there! Today I'm going to walk you through on how to make this macrame fanny pack. But what's cool about this project is that it can also be a crossbody bag, or you can customize it to be just a regular purse. And as always, don't forget to take a screenshot of today's project details. Now let's get started. We're going to start this project by making the front panel. So grab one of your 24 inch strands of cotton cord and tie an overhand knot at each end. This is going to help us later on in the project, so don't forget to tie that overhand knot. Next, we're going to attach all 18 cords using a reverse lark's head knot. So fold your cord in half and then find the loop end and place it up underneath your cord and then pull your tail ends through the loop. Cinch up the slack, then slide it over and attach the rest of them. With the first four cords, we're going to tie a square knot. Make a loop with your leftmost cord and then with your rightmost place it behind and through the loop. This is half of your square knot. To complete the other half, make a loop with your rightmost cord this time and then with your leftmost wrap it behind and through the loop. I'd like to point out that if I'm ever going too fast for you, feel free to adjust the speed of this video by tapping the three dots on the top right corner. Or if you need extra help, check out my knot tutorial playlist. Okay, so let's complete the first row of square knots. With our second row, we're going to alternate. So to do this, we're going to leave out the first two cords. And what we're going to do is join our first two knots together. Taking the last two cords from the first knot and the first two from the second, we're going to use those cords to tie a square knot. And we're going to continue going straight across, grabbing the next set of four cords. For the third row, we're going to continue to alternate. So grab the first four cords and tie your square knots. And we're going to go all the way straight across. We are going to continue to alternate until we have a total of five rows. Now we have a total of one, two, three, four, five rows. So now we're going to decrease on both sides. To decrease, we're going to remove the first two cords and the last two cords of each row. Once you have your cords up and out of the way, we're going to continue tying square knots all the way straight across each row with a total of three rows of decreasing alternating square knots. You should have a total of six square knots when you're done. With your last 24 inch strand of cotton rope, we're going to tie a knot on each end and then we're going to use this cord as our filler cord and tie double half inch knots all the way across the bottom. This is going to give your bag a really nice detail as well as really help us out later on when we go to sew it all together. To tie a double half inch knot, grab your first cord and you want to make a loop and you want to wrap your cord around your filler cord. This is half of your double half inch knot. To complete the other half, you just have to repeat the same thing and this will secure your knot. Grab your next cord in line and we're going to repeat. And we're going to continue on tying our double half inch knots all the way straight across contouring around the bottom of our front panel. When you're done, it should look something like this and that completes our front panel. Alrighty, so let's have a peek at our bag here. We completed the front panel, which is right here. Next, we're going to do the back panel, which is quite similar to the front, but it wraps all the way around to the top. So just like our front panel, we're going to attach all 18 cords using a reverse lark's head knot on our 24 inch cord. To form the top portion of our bag, we're going to tie alternating square knots like we did before, only for four rows. Okay, so double check that you have four rows, one, two, three, four. And it's crucial that your last row is a decreasing row. If you have stitch markers, this is where we're going to use them. We're going to place your stitch marker right around the first two cords here. And no worries if you don't have one, you can always use a scrap piece of cord. I'm going to use a scrap piece here to demonstrate. All you have to do is just wrap it around and tie an overhand knot. And I know I'm stating the obvious, but it does help to have your stitch marker a different color than your bag. 
Once you have both stitch markers on, we're going to continue tying alternating square knots for five more rows. Now we have one, two, three, four, five rows, and we're going to decrease like we did with our front panel. And of course, just like our front panel, we're going to do three rows of decreasing alternating square knots. You should have six square knots at the bottom. Next, we're going to tie our row of double half hitch knots all the way straight across the bottom. And that completes our back panel. Okay, so taking a look at our bag again, we did the front, we did the back. Now what we're gonna work on is the sides. To do this, we're gonna be working off of our D-ring. Attach two of our very long cords on our D-ring using a lark's head knot. With your cord folded in half, you're gonna take the loop end and place that through your D-ring. Then you're gonna thread your long tail ends through the loop that you created. Pull taut and then repeat one more time with your second strand of cord. Once you have both cords on there, we're gonna tie a regular square knot. Split your cords in half and we're gonna attach another cord with a square knot. So fold your long cord in half, find the loop end and place that loop behind your first two cords and then tie a square knot just as if it was already attached. This is a really sneaky way on how to increase your rows. And don't forget, if I'm going too fast for you, feel free to adjust the speed of this video by tapping the three dots on the top right corner. Okay, once you've attached your cord via square knot, slide it up to the top, and then we're gonna repeat the same thing with your last two cords. For your third row, we're also gonna be increasing. So we're gonna increase on the first two cords and the last two cords. The middle four, we're just gonna tie a regular square knot. Okay, so we did three rows so far. For the next 34 rows, we're gonna tie just regular alternating square knots. Okay, so at this point, we did 37 rows in total. And you should have ended on a row that has three square knots. To make our bag symmetrical and look the same as our top portion here, we need to decrease. Remove the first two and the last two cords and tie two square knots. And then in the last row, do one more square knot. You will have a total of 39 rows. Next, we're gonna attach our second D-ring. To attach it, we're gonna tie two vertical lark's head knots with our two center cords. Place your first strand in through the top of your D-ring. Then you're gonna wrap it over across the side. Then you're gonna bring it up through the bottom of your D-ring. But don't pull it all the way because you want that loop. Then with your tail end, you're gonna thread your tail through that loop. Pull taut and this is how you tie a vertical lark's head knot. Repeat the same thing with your second strand. So go through the top of your D-ring. Now you want your tail end to come up through the center this time so that your tail end is on your left. You want to cross it over to your right. Then bring your tail end up through the bottom of your D-ring and leave that loop. Then your tail end goes through the loop. Once you have those cinched up nicely, we're gonna flip our side panel over to the other side. 
With the two cords you use to tie the vertical lark head knots, we're going to tie a square knot around the next two bottom cords. This is going to make everything really secure. Next, trim the two center cords short and then trim the side cords as well, but leave a little bit of a tail. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please do me a favor and give it a like. When you like my videos, it helps push my videos out to other people, which in return helps me out so I can make more free content just like this one. All right, so now we're gonna seal up the ends with some fabric glue. I don't recommend hot glue for this project. Fabric glue is really what you need. It has the texture of Elmer's glue, but when it dries, it dries clear. It's non-toxic and it's meant for fibers. I found this particular brand at my local Walmart, but you can find many other brands on Amazon. And this completes our side panel. All right, so we have our front and back panel and you wanna make sure that the wrong sides are facing towards the inside, which means the right sides are facing outwards. You can tell which side is the right side by our row of double half hitch knots. When it's all sewn together, this top part here will fold over. And then of course, our side part is all along the bottom. When we sew it together, we're gonna to be sewing between these spaces here along the sides, as well as these empty spaces along the bottom. It's very crucial that you make sure everything lines up just right. So our third row here is gonna line up with our first row on our front panel. When you butt it up together, you can see that the spaces line up with each other. That's exactly what you want, and that's exactly where we're gonna sew. Thread your long cord through your tapestry needle. I find masking tape really helps with the threading. Once you have your cord through, you wanna remove that masking tape, otherwise it's gonna get caught while we sew. With the end of your cord, you wanna tie a double overhand knot. You want a double overhand knot so that it won't slip through those spaces. Make sure the three square knots on your side panel line up with the top of your front panel. And these first two spaces below are where we're gonna make our first stitch. And I like to stitch around both these two cords here. Make sure that your knot is secure in the back here, which mine is, and we can continue on. Pull your tapestry needle through the adjacent gap on your front panel and come back up through the same spot on your side panel. Okay, so this is the first stitch. I like to do two stitches in the same gap. And I like to double stitch for two reasons. The first reason is because obviously it's a bit more secure. And the second reason is because it kind of mimics the same shape as our square knots. Okay, so we're gonna make our next stitch by going down to the next open space and then joining it across to the adjacent space on our side panel. Repeat in the same two gaps if you're doing a double stitch just like me. At this point, we're going along this diagonal line, so you wanna place your tapestry needle through this gap right here. Once you make it to this very bottom bend here, we're gonna have a little bit of an awkward stitch. This is the only stitch that doesn't go through a regular gap. You wanna bring your tapestry needle up through the bottom middle of your square knot. And it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, so you might have to wiggle your needle around. This space connects with just a regular gap on our side panel. And of course, it's mirrored on the other side as well. So there's four of these stitches. Once you've made your way to the other side, it should be perfectly even on both sides. To fasten off your sewing cord, you wanna tie a regular knot right at the end, just as if it's a regular sewing project. Now your front panel is attached to your side and it should look something like this. Next, we're gonna attach the back panel, which is a lot similar to the front. 
The only thing different is we're going to start below our stitch markers and make sure the right side is facing up. Like I said, we're going to skip the top and we're going to start at the bottom below our stitch marker. And of course, you want to make sure your panels line up evenly. On your side panel here, you want your first three square knots in a row to line up with the first row right below your stitch marker on your back panel. Which means our first stitch is going to be in the gaps below those square knots. And just like how we stitched up the front panel, we're going to go in through the side and then back through our back panel. And I am making double stitches in each gap, just like I did with the front. Once you make it to the other side, everything should line up and fasten off like we did before. Oh, and you can remove your stitch markers now. Next, we're gonna snip off all the excess rope on the inside bottom of our bag, but do not snip the four cords on the top of our front and back panels. Now we get to sew on our zipper. My zipper here is the perfect length for this bag. I purchased it off of Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box. Okay, so thread your needle and tie a knot at the end. Line up your zipper, making sure that the pull tab is above our reverse lark's head knots. And we're gonna start sewing right at the very start of our zipper here, right at the end and you wanna make sure that it goes right through all of those cords. Then go back down through our cords and back through our zipper. And I just have to say, it's really difficult to get your stitches absolutely perfect when you're going through such thick cord. Just do your best and don't worry if your stitches are not perfectly straight, mine definitely are not. Okay, so we're going to hand stitch all the way straight across to the opposite end. Once you've made your stitches all the way straight across, we're going to fasten off with a couple of knots. So I'm just going in through the back here and catching some of the cords, pulling my needle through and then just tying a knot. And I did this several times just to make sure that it's very secure. So sewing on the top portion of our zipper is a little bit trickier than the bottom, but it's not too bad. Okay, so get your needle and thread prepared and open up your zipper. Line up the top portion of your zipper to the top of your bag. And if it helps you, feel free to use some pins. But don't worry if you don't have any pins. I didn't use any pins, but it would have been helpful. Okay, so continue sewing all the way to the end. And once you get to the end, that's when it starts getting a little bit trickier. As you can see, once you get to the end, it's, um, there's not a lot of room to work. All it takes is a little bit of patience. And again, don't be too concerned if your stitches aren't perfectly straight, especially at the end here. Okay, so once you have your zipper sewn on and fastened off, we're gonna finish off the ends here. This is why it was important not to trim these pieces. We're gonna tie double half hitch knots so that it looks like it wraps right around our zipper. And FYI, make sure you do not bury your pull tab of your zipper like I just did. <laughs> okay, now that I fixed the zipper, we're gonna go ahead and repeat to the other side and snip off our ends. Bring out that fabric glue and we're gonna go ahead and glue the ends so that they don't unravel. Now this is the part where you get to customize whether you want a fanny pack, a crossbody bag, or a purse. The only thing you have to worry about is how long you want your strap. Attach your two cords on your swivel D-ring clasp using a lark's head knot. However, you want the two inside cords to be shorter than the two outside cords. My two middle cords measured at 60 inches. And my two outside cords were about three times that length. Okay, so to make the strap, it's quite simple. All we're gonna do is tie a whole bunch of square knots. 
Now you have plenty of rope to work with, so no matter what size you want, you will have the correct length of rope. But I do apologize, since I was trying to accommodate everyone, you will probably have a little bit of waste. Okay, so I worked my way all the way down to the length that I like. Now we're going to attach the two center cords onto our D-ring swivel clasp. And to do this, we're going to tie more vertical lark's head knots. Thread your cord through your D-ring, then pull your cord across. Then you want to go back up through your D-ring, leaving a loop. Then take your tail end and thread it through that loop. Pull taut, and that is your vertical lark's head knot. Repeat with your second middle cord. Once you've tied both of your knots, you're going to flip it over to the other side. And we're going to tie three square knots around the whole thing. Even though by doing this, it's not perfectly symmetrical to the other side, it will ensure that your strap is not going anywhere. Once you've completed all three square knots, we're going to snip our cords. We're going to leave a little bit of a tail on the two outer cords and then the two center we're going to snip off short. Then we're going to fold in our short little tail ends and glue it. Once your glue is dry, you can clip it onto your bag. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I sure hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you're new here, I sure hope you consider subscribing. I post weekly macrame tutorials just like this one pretty much every single Sunday. So I hope you stick around. And I'll see you in the next one.